Uh, all right, so welcome to the lecture on sensors. In this first video, we're going to talk about uh, uh, what sensors are, um, how do biosensors work, and uh, human biomarkers, what uh, we measure in, uh, in uh, Biomems and Lab on a Chip. So, first of all, uh, to orient yourself, uh, this is the system that you will work with in the lab, or this will be the, the one that we present to you in the experimental lab, and it consists of uh, two pumps, um, a camera, which uh, now falls under the category of, uh, of sensors, and the liquid path, which takes care of uh, the liquid handling, which consists of uh, the liquid reservoir, in this case uh, it is a syringe, uh, various fittings, tubing, connectors, and the chip itself loaded into the chip holder of this uh, thermostat unit, and uh, then the product collector. And I don't have the actuators marked on this uh, image, but uh, the, the heater is, or the thermostat is an actuator by default. And the pump is also an actuator. So uh, if you want to learn more about uh, the, the liquid path, then you can go back to lecture three. If you want to learn more about uh, actuators, then uh, you can take a look at uh, lecture nine and sensors are what we cover in this lecture today. And we will talk about uh, the various sensor modalities that uh, we use in the lab on a chip uh, field. We talk about optical, electrical, and also, uh, well, we don't talk too much about flow sensing, but uh, the same principles apply. So, first of all, what's a sensor? A sensor is a transducer that converts one form of energy to another, and in so, I mean, doing so, detects and conveys information about some physical, chemical, or biological phenomena. Uh, in our case, it translates usually to converting some sort of uh, reaction product to an electrical signal and how it's converted, there are various methods. Chemical, thermal, electromagnetic, and mass change based. So the, the sensor is what does the transformation and then you get an, an analog electrical signal that you can quantize, convert to digital. You also have to filter and amplify, obviously, but uh, that's how it goes. And the sensor is what converts the measure end which is a quantity or a parameter into a signal that carries the information. And by the signal, as I said, we typically mean an analog signal that you need to process, amplify, filter, blah, blah, blah. The ideal sensor measures continuously, is sensitive and selective, has fast and predictable response, has a reversible behavior, high signal to noise ratio, is compact, is immune to environmental interference, which connects with the SNR, and is easy to calibrate. Obviously, not many of the sensors that we use meet all of these criteria at once, but this is what would be ideal. Categories, biosensors is what we will mostly deal with. There are smart sensors, passive or active, array type, multimodal, um, these are the categories that sensors can fall into. And what we look here, what we look at here is um, the transfer function. So here's a stimulus output curve. Stimulus being the input and output being the electrical signal. Then 
this is the response curve with slope B, which also translates to sensitivity, and the intercept of this uh, linear curve is the output at zero signal. And then there's one more thing that we need to talk about, which is the hysteresis, which is a type of error, is the maximum difference between outputs at a specific point of input stimulus when approached first increasing, then decreasing the stimulus. And the example that I would like to give you is inflating and deflating a balloon while measuring pressure. Um, if we use silicon tubing, then uh, this hysteresis can play a part, although it is quite minor compared to the actual pressure that you are measuring. But uh, the inflation deflation of uh, soft bodies is something that uh, can have however minor an effect on uh, what you read. And then the transfer function looks like this. That's what uh, gives you the linear curve. So biosensors, as I said, uh, this is what we will mostly talk about. The goal for a biosensor is to tell how much of something you have in your solution, how much of your target. And uh, the next slide will be about what the target can be. Uh, so biomarkers how much of something you have in your solution. And this something can be called a target or an analyte. In the case of diagnosis or diagnostics, it is a target. In the case of uh, analytics, it is an analyte. And it is measured in terms of concentration or molarity, moles per cubic meters or moles per liter. So amount of molecules in a certain amount of volume. And Here's a diagram of uh, how that works. So you have here a reaction converting substrate or substance to product. And uh, you have an interface which uh, connects to your transducer that uh, converts this concentration to an electric signal. And then you amplify and, and uh, filter that signal and then you can uh, process the signal and then at the end you have a human readable representation. And close up, the reaction um, with the interface looks like this. There is an active sensory layer which uh, can mean a number of things but uh, for the easiest example let's assume that you have um, a surface activated in a way that specifically binds the target molecule, for instance. So let's say you want to bind in a pregnancy test, you want to bind uh, HCG, uh, chorionic gonadotropin, then surface needs to be activated for that. Or for COVID tests, you want to bind the, the virus particle, then there needs to be a surface activated for that. So antibodies that specifically bind the antigen, in this case the virus, or the, the spike proteins of the virus. And then the transducer is, is what we mostly deal with in our field of uh, engineering. So you are not going to work on this part, that's for biologists and chemists. You're going to work on this part if you ever work on sensors. Now uh, about biomarkers. So biomarkers mean a chemical, its metabolite, or a product of an interaction between a chemical and some target molecule or cell that is measured in the human body. So chemical, metabolite, metabolite means that uh, it has already been processed by the body, for instance, the active uh, formulation of a drug or the active metabolite of a drug that has already been processed by the liver or the the metabolite that is excreted after being processed. That's, uh, these are the things that you can consider. And then also products of an interaction between a chemical or a, or a target molecule or cell. And the concentration of biomarkers, the ones that we study anyway, they are characteristic of the physiological state of an organism. So there's a 
an example table here. So for instance, prostate cancer uh, can be uh, detected by picking up prostate specific antigen in a high concentration in urine. Liver cancer, cancer also has a, a specific biomarker. For pregnancy, the biomarker is human chorionic gonadotropin. That's what the pregnancy test uh, detects. If you detect a high concentration of troponin or creatine kinase in, the, in blood, then that's a, an indication of uh, heart muscle damage. And uh, similarly, um, even cells in your own body are biomarkers, the concentration of uh, red blood cells, white blood cells, um, uh, C-reactive protein, and so on. They are specific biomarkers to certain processes. For instance, CRP is for inflammatory processes in general, but so is uh, hematocrit uh, and, and, and a number of other markers that uh, we look at in in uh, in blood tests, but arsenic, if we pick up arsenic from urine, that's an indicator of uh, toxicity. So yeah, these things. And pregnancy test is something that is well understood, uh, but I can also talk about uh, something else, glucometers. They also detect something that is a, a biomarker for our body. They detect uh, the level of of uh, sugar in your blood, uh, the level of glucose in your blood. In that case, that is also a, a biomarker. Um, but pregnancy tests are good examples because, um, because everyone knows them, everyone has seen them, they are really easily accessible and because of mass production, they are extremely cheap. Nowadays, you can get uh, test strips for one euro or even less. And uh, yeah, it indicates a physiological process and uh, the concentration of HCG characterizes the, the progress or the, the, the status uh, of pregnancy, which week it is in. So in this video, we talked about what sensors are, how biosensors work, and some human biomarkers that uh, we can measure in our bioanalytical slash diagnostic tests. Thank <music> you.